All right. So we solved at the deadline, for the most part. We barely missed the playoffs. How's that draft lottery sound? Gary Bless! Papa Bettman Bless! <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Where's that tenor I promised you? I don't even carry cash, Gary. I don't even have any cash. Take my wallet, Gary. Thank you. My boy, Gary. Arizona maintains the number one pick. But Seattle's getting the Roman Reigns pushed to the moon. Things you love to see. That. Oh, baby. <laughs> so with that, it is Shane Wright season. We'll miss out on that franchise level player unless the Coyotes blow it. But we barely miss the playoffs and still get a top two pick. Love to see it. You'll love to see it. Uh, in terms of player retirements, and you should be salty. Let it be known, I am the king of franchise. That's why these things happen for me. I thank you. It's beautiful. Oh, good it's a for beautiful, you! Beautiful, beautiful day. Appreciate the follow there. God, no goalies retire at the end of season one, though. We're fine. All right. Uh, we're not going to worry about the draft class. What's the difference? Uh, I mean, mainly graphical. Mainly graphical. As far as I know. It's franchise king, but I'm a draft god. Ha! Ah, Frederick McDonough. Sin, we're both great. Just pats on the back. We're both great. To the draft we go. Arizona not willing to trade the pick. Surprise, surprise. Philly at three, though. They are willing to trade the pick. So Arizona, it's it's outright impossible that we're going to end up with this pick. There's no way. I could try. And I will. But it's unlikely. Hello, monkey dude. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Slushy will thank you for the follow as well. Uh, here's the deal. We just we just locked up an R. You know, we we acquired an RFA like Kyler Yamamoto. Oh, Kyler, for you. how would you like to go to Arizona? Okay, apparently not. Um, yeah, Mr. New One, thank you for the follow as well. How uh, the stream go, Mark? Did it turn around at all? What if I were to also add in Riker Evans? This is very unlikely that they're going to take this deal. I'm very well aware of what Wenberg looks like. Very well aware. Don't worry. What if I also use one Yessi Pooley who we also just acquired at the deadline? They'd have too many players. That's okay. That's okay, because what you do is you give me Andrew Ladd. Okay. And then what you also do... Well, I mean, I guess Louis Erickson, but you're not going to consider him negative value. What if you take out Pooley Arby? You know, we might as well see. There's no guarantees that giving up Wenberg would be enough. But uh, I'm willing to do it. Second overall, Yamamoto, Riker, Evans, Wenberg. They're not going to budge, man. They're not going to budge. Not a chance. What if I were to also give you Jesse Pugliarvi? <laughs> Please? They're not going to budge, man. We're so far off. Oh, Deke, you're not even ending up with right. You're ending up with a medium franchise that was uh, generated by the game. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, well, we got 40-some-odd seconds here, Tops. Wouldn't you guys like a shiny Chris Drieger? You'd have too many goalies. 
Oh, that's right, you acquired Sergei Bobrovsky. I forgot about that. Whoops. Totally forgot that they traded for Bobrovsky. What about Kale Flurry as well? Nope, okay. I'm boned. I'm boned, there it is. Yeah, they took Stevenson. All right. Um, yeah, he's gonna be really good. He He's gonna be pretty good. His puck on a string for zone abilities, superstar abilities. I mean, he's just amazing with the puck. That's what it is. He is unbelievable with the puck. But uh, in the Matty Beneers spot, even though, of course, I elected not to restart a franchise with adding him in, uh, that does mean that we get Shane Wright, who uh, tore the OHL a new one. No identifiable weaknesses. Is NHL ready. Also has puck on a string and is also fantastic with the puck. Apparently has really good face-offs as well. And um, has elite edges. So great agility. I mean, again, we had the 11th best odds and we won the second overall pick. We'll be taking Shane Wright. Achievement. Sweet, beautiful achievement. You'll love to see it. Yeah, Shane Wright, welcome aboard. Um... In terms of anything else we can do, as you immediately see how high his value is compared to everyone else, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, can I get anything from Miko Koskinen's rights? Nope. From there. Do I want to bank on Chalosky being the guy? Zone ability gives a better boost than superstar ability. You can have, you know, like Puck on a String is also a superstar ability. Zone ability is just an even better boost. What can I get for Dennis Jalowski? Third and a fifth. Two thirds, a second from Buffalo, technically from Philly. Stelia Mateos is kind of an equalizer. I mean, the problem with Chalosky is his age, right? Like, he's not going to get that much better. There's Ratcliffe is there. Timothy Liljegren is there. Honestly, Liljegren's an interesting comparison here. I mean, he's 23 and only a 77, whereas Chalosky is 24 and an 80. Yeah. It's not worth it. Not with the age. Liljegren's not a young man anymore. Again, I want to stay loyal to some of the guys that were designed to be a part of this team in the future. I'm just kind of looking at what our defense is going to be like next year, and to be honest, I mean, those top six will probably still be sticking around. Then we'll see who's out there on the free agent market. It's probably best to hold on to Chalosky and Flurry for the moment. So then for the forwards, uh, we have too many people, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I mean, we got, we got too many people. We do. Goon Squad returning at some point. I mean, it's one of my favorite series, so yeah, it'll be back at some point. I don't know if we'll do it this year. We might wait until next year, perhaps. Gotta keep an eye on the minus three cams on defense. You're not wrong. Yarn Croak's deal is up. It's Brad Lambert goes to Philadelphia. Yarn Croak might be the guy to move just because he's on an expiring deal. And Yamamoto is, but he's an RFA. Jared McCann's deal is also up. Cuts. If we if we look at this team, right? If we go with those top three. Those next six will pretty much be locked into place. Then it's Pugliarvi, Tanev, and then like a Blackwell or Donato or Shane Wright. We should probably see what we can get for Jared McCann. Second rounder from Philly. And Mark Pissick, a second and a sixth. Two 
two thirds. We wouldn't have to wait for next season. Second and Hunter Skinner. Ratcliffe is out there. I could see how uh, good he is or not. Wouldn't be that bad. He's 23 and he's only a 74. Absolutely not. <laughs> Gonna trade Beast Mode, boy. Yeah, I got to. More than likely, at least, I have to. It's either that or we immediately flip Yamamoto and pull Yarvi off of this team and stay with, like, McCann and Yarncroak. But the problem is McCann and Yarncroak are both UFAs. I mean, we just kind of memed our way into Yamamoto and Pooley Harvey being on the team. But they're RFAs, so they're going to be much easier to maintain. Uh, I will take that second and the sixth from Edmonton to send them Jared McCann. And again, that's just the rights for Jared McCann. We'll take that, which means he might actually still be an RFA. But we'll move on from Jared McCann. We are going to move on from Callie Arncroak as well. Uh, and get whatever the hell we can for his rights. Which is not much. That is a seventh rounder. Uh, we'll try to... I guess we'll send him to Arizona. Screw it. We'll take a bit of a morale hit there. That's okay. The team itself... Again, we got room for Shane Wright to immediately jump. We're looking okay. Uh, in terms of whether or not there's anybody else that we can kind of nickel and dime off of this team, well, that's that's kind of the question now, right? That's pretty much what we'll take a look at. Again, we couldn't get anything for Koskinen. Can I get anything for Bebo? No, I cannot. Um, again, anything out there for Riker Evans? No. I'm not saying I'm limiting myself to only using the trade block, but... I think I've had a change of heart with Chalosky. Don't really think he's gonna develop all that well for us at this stage. Stelio's out there. Now we're gonna see. 72 at 23. Not ideal. Not ideal. And the worst part is it won't just kick you back. It won't just kick you back to where you were with the offers. You gotta resubmit the offers. Magnuson's a low six, third and fourth, third and fourth. I mean, it's got to involve a second. We know that Liljegren's not that great at this stage. Cody, take it easy, man. You know, Ratcliffe wasn't great. Sorokin, we really don't need. Sam Arukov's not going to be that great. He's older as well. Well, uh, I'll take that second round pick from Buffalo. It's a Flyers pick in 2023, I believe, from the Risto deal, right? So, I'll take that. We'll move on from Dennis Jalowski. Which works for me. Again, there's really nothing for Evans. Uh, Otto Vinen, anything for you? Nope. You Jeremy Lozon, anything for you? No. Brady Lyle. Wow, there's actually an offer for Brady Lyle, really. Milan Lucic, baby! <laughs> really. Don't you think you should be adding more than a 7th to get me to take Milan Lucic? Like at that cap hit? Jason Demir's rights. Uh, we'll take two 7ths from Ottawa for Brady Lyle. That's perfectly fine. Uh, Mark Pissick's uh, signing rights. Looking like 7ths. Tara's the low fringe. We'll take that 7th from the Rangers. We're going to have all the 7ths, baby. Connor Carrick. Four sevenths. Cool beans. Thoughts on price? Yes, we're going to save it for the podcast. We, uh, we'll be recording Friday. Be nice. Be myself, Endo, and one Sinski for the Winski on that show. Uh, admittedly, there won't be much discussion about Carey because I respect the guy's privacy and it's There's all, honestly not that much to talk about, right? It's just, what, what's the summary of it? I hope he's okay. Let's see. Keep Colin and keep Willie Harvey. Melanson's actually not that bad. 
Can I get anything for Dennis Morgan? <clears throat> Fourth and a sixth. Medium starter goalie in Stuart Skinner, who was uh, MVP of their Calder Cup run in Bakersfield. I see ooh, who you go all in the felts. Uh, honestly, <laughs> let's work out another deal with Edmonton. I'm not done with them. That's the meme. I'm not done with Edmonton. Uh, Nathan Bastion's upset that I just made a trade. Unfortunately for Nathan Bastion, he doesn't realize that he is also about to be traded. Poor guy. You never saw it coming. You're on your way to Washington. Have fun. <clears throat> we'll just keep tearing down this team bit by bit. Uh, Ryan Donato had a pretty good year, but I'm willing to move on from him. Uh, I can get a fourth and a seventh to send him back to Boston. Valtteri Puistin is not a bad option if he could actually develop. Um, medium starter goalie in Bjorklund. Thank you. I'll do that. The Edmonton Kraken. Uh, Evgeny Svechnikov, 5th and the 7th. Brandon Hagel, randomly. Again, I'm just enjoying the offers being sent my way. Why not? Take a 5th and the 7th, send Svechnikov out to Vegas. Can I get anything for Carson Torinsky? No, what a surprise. Yurko, yes. We're going to multiple sevens, but we'll do it. We're going to have all the late round picks, damn it. Uh, Kirby Reichel can somehow fetch us two seventh round picks. Why the hell not? We're going to need all the help we can get on this team. We have no prospect fucker. Uh, looks like we can get a seventh of the rights to Victor Rask. We'll trade Chris Terry's rights. Why the hell not? Uh, Max McCormick, nothing. Kevin Waugh, Kevin Roy, nothing. Uh, center. Morgan Geeky isn't bad. He's not going to get that much better, but we'll hold on to him. Ryan Winterton, I hate to say it, is kind of garbage. You get a sixth in Chara's rights. I'd rather take the sixth and the seventh from Winnipeg. So we have uh, we have done pretty well to strip away most of this team. As Ringo hits us up in the two months on the prime. Ringo, thank you. It is appreciated. How the heck are you? Uh, Alex True, you're not going to get that much better. Can't get anything for you, though. Uh, Luke Henman, can I get anything for you? I can, somehow. It doesn't make sense. There's a sixth in John Merrill's signing rights. Or I could get Austin Watson, who's actually a useful player, but a bit of a dick. So we won't do that. Uh, can I get anything for Jordan Nolan? How the hell can I acquire anything for Jordan Nolan? Washington, have fun. Riley Shayan. Thierry Libushkin. More sevenths, baby. All the sevenths. Let's make it happen. Tell nothing. And Blackwell's the last guy we'll check. And uh, again, it's it's more sevenths. Send him to Colorado. Done deal. Indeed. I don't know how it turned into pick hoarding, but it very much did. Uh, I'm not really going to worry, I think, about trading up unless there's a steal. We should actually take a look here. Um, I don't think anybody... Yeah, I mean, Vancouver at pick number 11 is willing to trade, but we don't really have the value. That could potentially fetch us Joachim Kamel. There's also Lucas Quirk. One year out, apparently. Couturier comparison. That guy might be worth trading up for. Um, Rozov. Tough sell. Matt Ward, I highly doubt, is actually a medium elite. People would have told me about him. Unconfirmed X-Factors and boosts. Same for uh, Elias Solomonson, who, if I'm not mistaken, is real. So I don't trust those X-Factors. Uh, Frazier Minton. What a name. It's on Cam Loops, and his name is Frazier, so he's definitely real. Uh, Radulov. Three years out. I mean, the only real guy that we can uh, that we can bank on right now is Quirk, but I don't really think we have the assets to trade up that far. 
Tristan Leno is there. There was a low elite in Timofey Kasparaitis towards the end of the first round. Uh, has five guaranteed superstar abilities. Holy shit. As a defenseman as well. Wow. That guy's worth looking at for sure. Jordan May is there. I think we I think we have a target here. That guy looks sick. What was he projected to go? He's much more acquirable than Quirk. Uh, mid to late twenties. Pick number twenty two with Tampa. Uh, let's use Trade Finder for the moment just to kind of see a general idea of what that would cost to get that pick from the Lightning. Chris Drieger in two thirds. I don't know why the hell they want Chris Drieger. It doesn't make sense. I mean, granted, if he can be a backup for the Kraken, he can be a backup for us. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer of a pick. 15 second rounders. Um, otherwise, honestly, Kale Flurry could be used. Take a hit at backup goalie or hold on to Kale Flurry, you know? I mean, if I can use Evans instead. Tampa would have too many skaters, apparently. Uh, if I could use Evans instead, that is a no brainer. What if I take on Patty Maroon? Just a bit off. Evans, two thirds, and 17 sevenths. Oh my god, we do have so many sevenths. Two thirds, two sevenths, and Riker Evans. We have the 22nd overall pick. Patrick Maroon, welcome to Seattle. For how long? Literally not at all, because uh, I'm immediately going to try to trade your rights. Immediately. Patrick Maroon. Um, have fun in Edmonton again. <laughs> you won't, but you could try. Done deal. Uh, so let's go ahead. 22nd pick here. And uh, we are going to get this potential stud of a defenseman. Really good senses. Two years out. But he has five locked-in abilities. Tape to tape, in reverse, snipe. Back at you, and uh, elite edges. Which are incredible for a defenseman. I mean, literally, you're telling me he's good with the puck, he's a good skater. Come on. So, Timothy Kasparitis, come on down. And he is a 71. Low elite. At 18 years. Oh my god. <laughs> what? What's cracking? This guy's crack. Oh my god. Whoo. <laughs> Let's go, baby! I drafted an X-Factor player right out of the gates. Remember when I said it was my year? It is my year. This is my game. Roster sharing, X-Factors in the draft. I've been training on Madden for a couple years now. This is my year. We thought he'd just have abilities. Dude, he has his own ability out of the gates. So he ended up with Quick Pick, which again, I agree with Knight, the logo makes sense, so he's got incredible intercepting uh, abilities. Has the tape to tape, has Thunderclap from the point. Dude, look, at he's a shooter. He's not just a good skater, like he's a shooter. He's got Thunderclap and Heat Seeker. Like, I just drafted the next Mark Giordano. He's good at shrugging off hits, he's got great back skating. Holy shit. Dude, this guy is incredible. This man is absolutely incredible. Oh my god. Wow, dude. Wow. How good was the other guy? Quirk was a 73 medium top six, and he he might have wheels, not even. That's incredible.
So again, we win the lottery essentially to get Shane Wright. So we've added Shane Wright. We've added two X Factor players already. First draft, second overall and 22nd overall, we've added two X Factor players. <laughs> uh, hello, Ludwig Janssen. Don't have enough confirmed about him. There's Ronaldo. Denton Mavichuk is real. Vitacek's real. Man. Pat Maroon was tarred and feathered. <laughs> I sent Pat Maroon back to Edmonton. Was it worth it? You're damn right it was worth it. <clears throat> You're damn right it was worth it. Oscar Backer could be decent, but I can't guarantee that I can trade up for him. Uh, Turkov, I don't know enough about. Uh, Lars Stahlberg, I also don't really know enough about him yet. Is Ruslan Shishkinov. Three years out, again, not confirmed in terms of potentials. Arnsby, Matias, he's real. Pierce Tapper. Ah, uh, there's a goalie! Israel Holden. Kale Flurry, Gavin Bjorklund to the fourth. Done deal. Done deal. <laughs> Garen, whatever. Who gives a fuck what his name is? <laughs> My first draft on NHL 22. Three X Factor players. Three. Don't you forget who the king is. Don't you forget it. I might have taken a step back for a little bit because last year my roster files got deleted. Don't you forget who the king of this mode is. Don't you forget it. Holy crap, dude. He's got contortionist. No timer, light work, dialed in and sponge. <laughs> oh my god. Are zone abilities this common? No. 65, medium elite at 18 years old. Oh my god. So it's like you see who else has been drafted. Like Shishkinov was nothing special. Parent was nothing special. This is unreal. This has been an ungodly draft. And thank God for our horrible, horrible scouts. Because, I mean, honestly, that's obviously why. We've gotten very lucky that our scouts uh, have done an incredible job. Uh, it looks like the Yotes might have gotten someone with an ability there. Jesus. So I ended up with an X-Factor forward, defenseman, and goaltender. In the first draft. Solomonson has an unconfirmed zone ability. Radulov. Minton, not confirmed. Unconfirmed as well from Matt Ward. This is crazy. <clears throat> we have had an ungodly draft. Gary absolutely rigged it up for me. Move over Ron Francis. Four years out for Grabeshkov. Nothing too amazing there. This Mateo Parks. Great senses, no weaknesses. Confirmed to have magnetic. Does Mateo Parks. He could be our next target here. There might be something there. 
Ty Peltola. No weaknesses as well. We have as much confirmation on the grades. Josh Bradford, also no weaknesses confirmed, has tape to tape. Interesting. Uh, Sylvester, three years out, no weaknesses as well. Some, some toss-ups here. Zernkovich. Is he a confirmed medium elite? Why the hell does he have medium elite? He's 20. What? You know the guy who does the ratings, don't you? I mean, well, shit, if we're going to draft somebody for value, it's him. Jonah Ebbett also confirmed with no weaknesses. Not confirmed with three bars. That looks like a max confirmed to me. Like, it can be a little bit difficult to tell, man, but that, that looks locked in. <laughs> that looks locked in to me. God. There's some tough calls here, though. Sam Oliver. People are saying three out of four. I don't know, man. I mean, if I squint really hard, is there a difference between some of the... I don't know, man. You're telling me the ETA as well is only three bars. I don't know. We might have to take the chance anyway. Uh, Pat Fowler. And somebody else listed with no weaknesses, huh? Get four bars and weaknesses. Let's take a look. Dude, that potential, as well as the ETA, those are the same fucking thing. At least it looks like it on my monitor. As I look on this other monitor, I guess I can see it in a lighter shade. I don't know if there's a major difference to my monitor settings here. I don't know, man. I don't know. They look to be the same damn thing to me. Only one way to find out. Slav Emelin. Uh, Slavkovsky. I saw his potential. I'm pretty sure it's not outrageously good. I think it's like a low top six. I do believe. Uh, ben Trotter. Okay, don't. Yeah, you go right ahead and make your pick, St. Louis. It's fine. Apparently people got better eyes than I do. Yeah, not really sold on, not really sold on Trotter. You should pick three different colors, not shades. I agree, because it looks like the same damn thing to me. Chensky, again, no weaknesses. I'm telling you, man, my monitor, it shows like, again, there's a difference between these two but I'm telling you, I see that same shaded in color for Asplin that I saw for Cernkovich. That's it. Like difference between this one, difference between that one, difference between that one. But I don't know what to tell you. Like I see Medvinov here and it's like, okay, that potential's not confirmed. But that ETA was the same thing for Cernkovich and that's what the potential looked like. Sarkovich, or excuse me, Medvinov is a tough one to uh, tough one to check. Trevor Long really fell off. I mean, not really. He still has a much higher potential than he should. Uh, Force Mark could also be worth it. I'm trying to see if there are any slam dunks here, but it's not looking like it at that stage of the draft. anything later and we're going to have a rough time. No weaknesses for Petri Santala. Zach Stringer being real and the fact that he's 19 years old makes me think there's no way he has a good potential. Same thing for Rhett Reinhardt, but I'm still pin him for the moment. Yeah, I mean, all these real players, it's, it's not going to be that great. Craig Shipley, what we got for you? Not confirmed, but could be a shout. So, in terms of trading up any further, it's not worth it. It's 
far as I can tell. Which apparently I can't, according to some people. Uh, as far as I can tell, there was not another slam dunk pick. Unless... Well, actually, no, that's, uh, that's incorrect. There was Parks. Parks or Bradford. And it's Parks who's showing up as having a decent option. So we're looking around like pick number 46. It's 40. And we have a pick before that. That's perfect. We actually don't have to trade. We have pick number 43. And uh, we'll go for it here. We're going to go for Mateo Parks. Had a horrible season in terms of production for a 17-year-old, but... He has, he's confirmed to have at least one superstar ability. Mateo Parks. It's a 61, medium top six. And has no abilities, actually. We got you baited, so I guess that wasn't locked in. It's not bad, though. It's still a medium top six. Um, honestly, Detroit. I would love to be able to trade up to get that pick. I just don't know if the value is there. That's no, not going to happen, unfortunately. Um, we'll send these next three picks. We'll see if the other guy that we want is still on the board. Pilstrom's gone. Lamoro. Grabeshkov. How good was Grabeshkov? Also looking a little bit shaky. Uh, so Bradford is still on the board. He was the other guy I was really interested in. Is there a deal that can be made uh, with Ottawa to trade up here? Alexiak and Rodrigue, Dunn and Rodrigue, Parks and Rodrigue, if we wanted to take another shot at it, and a second next year in Rodrigue. Honestly, I mean, we literally just drafted Parks, but I'm not afraid to move on from him to try and hopefully hit a slam dunk. Like Rodrigue and goal we don't need anymore. Uh, this is a big risk because there's a chance this guy is worse than Parks, but we're going to go for it. We're going to move on from those two. And uh, see if Bradford can be a home run for us here with some abilities. What do we got? And, yep, the, uh, the risk did not pan out. We lost a lot of value on that one. But uh, we could afford to miss out on a lot of value with that one. Just because of the quality of the draft that we've already had. Trotter being listed as three years out is promising. He's probably the best option we're going to have for a while. Got him and Spochensky. Or Medvinov. Simon Forsmark is real, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we'll keep this pick. Let's go for Trotter. See if we can just kind of hit a random home run here. We cannot, but we do get a medium top nine enforcer, of all things. So we'll take that. But yeah, unfortunately, that uh, oof, that late, that late second round uh, swing and miss. That'll haunt me a little bit. That'll haunt me a little bit. Hey, look, it's Jan Lashing. The old QMJHL run. Yeah, damn that. Uh, that swing and a miss was was quite rough. Um, Matthias Franzen could be worth the risk. That guy has a shot and an ability, but there's no guarantees. Bringing grip back right. Let's see what else we got here. Um, so again, these guys aren't confirmed. And are they all real? Goalie's not. I think Malik is very much real. Lance Lopez is apparently hot garbage. And these guys are a level down. I'm telling you, man, like I see a difference between that and that, but then there was a darker version. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, Cernkovich, it, it looked a certain way. I have no idea who the hell we're going to take here. I 
Honestly, it just looks like uh, a bunch of best guesses at this stage. Brady Burns, still in the draft, huh? This guy's confirmed to have a yoink, apparently. Hancock. Cannons is a low elite. Looks like he's gonna be trash, but he is a low elite. Honestly, that's kind of what we're looking at, is just throwing random picks out there and seeing what the hell happens. A lot of guys that our scouts identify as potentially being low elites or close to it. Don't know if Johansson's real or not. He saved some X factors for my draft. <laughs> Sorry, Deke, I gotta be selfish. There's three bars for you, I cannot confirm. I'm tired of being trolled. Uh, Ledbedev. Not looking that bad. Ramberg with a name like that. You gotta be real. Josh Schlemko. I am very well aware that I am low on time. Alright. Well, hey. It's the fourth round. We had a big swing and miss in the second round. Um, I am still going for Hancock here. Because if that's a three out of four... But damn it, it's still worth the risk. He is a medium seventh. That hurts a little bit. Still in the fourth round. Blake, what's going on, man? Uh, we'll take Hawken in here just because he's projected to go recently out of anybody that we have pinned. He's a medium bottom six. All right, well, bring in the horrible prospects, but at least with our first couple picks of the draft, we nailed it. Ah, uh, Nico Leighton, how good are you? You're a low six. Fifth rounder for a sixth and a seventh next year, sure. With how this is going, I can afford, I, I, I can afford to kind of trade down. Uh, Valery Ledbedev is a medium top four, but he is a 46 overall, for God's sakes. God help me. Uh, we'll go with Caleb Von Fersen. He's a low top six. When having all the draft picks goes wrong. Uh, next up. Gonna have somebody left on the board, right? Uh, Caden Negrin, 17 year old goalie. Medium starter. So I got Rod Rieg back, essentially. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Uh, and let's see who else we have pinned. Let's go for Callie Eklund for the hell of it. There's a low top six power forward. That's not bad. Still have no idea if that potential can actually develop or not this year. I hope it can. Um, we'll go for the not confirmed low elite apparently. Apparently there's a darker shade of confirmed than that, but Gustav's Kennens. It was a low top six as well. Well, if low top six can develop, we have a shot. We have a shot. Honestly, it's really not bad for a seventh rounder. Uh, we'll take the goalie, Josh Slemko, who is a fringe. We will also take Tyrone Holloway, who was trash. Oh god, how many picks am I going to have in the seventh round? Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, Michael Bianconi, we used him quite a bit once upon a time. We'll take uh, Jaden Girard. Trash. It's, it's not even worth trading away these picks at this stage. So you might as well just go for it, you know? Might as well just go for it. This is going to be bad. We'll take Scott Curry. Low seven. God. All right. Uh, well, apparently Chandler Knight's not confirmed. 
There's a medium bottom six. Cool beans. Anybody else who's not real, so you have a chance of having a half decent potential. Florian Boogle. What a name. Yeah, but Hayes. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, DeAndre Raymond. Come on down. Low bottom six. We have literally all the seventh round picks after trading away the rights to everybody. Good lord. Uh, Hayden Braithwaite. Why not? We have like every other pick. This is incredible. Julian Ellington. Low seven. And uh, thank God that's it. We made it. We made it, everybody. Didn't make as many picks as I thought, but right Casparitis and Holden was absolutely incredible. We dealt Parks because I thought Bradford had a shot of at least being as good. He didn't. Uh, but those top three picks make this an absolute home run of a draft. Uh, needless to say, we've, we've put our own little stamp on Seattle at this stage. Again, Holden, a confirmed <laughs> X-Factor goalie uh, with four abilities as well. On defense, we added Timofey Kasparaitis, X-Factor with five abilities. I cannot wait to see how good he's going to be. And then, of course, we ended up with the number two pick because Bettman is the best. And it was Shane Wright, who was also incredible. Seattle, who needs Matty Beneers? Who needs him? We are set. We are good to go.